In our last video, we mentioned storms, and um, we got quite a few emails from people and people on YouTube saying, yes, we'd like to hear more about storms. So we put together like an outline, and what we want to do is just talk about storms in relation to sailing. The outline that we're looking at, and I don't know how it's going to go, as with all videos, <laughs> is we're going to talk about storm prep anchor watch or what to do when a storm hits you on and you're on the boat anchored unexpected storms and squalls the first one we wanted to talk about was storm prep yep. and um i think just to qualify there's two types of storm prep isn't there there's one when you're at sea and then there's one when you're in a marina or in on an anchor yeah and I don't want to get into the topic of dealing with tropical storms or hurricanes because that is that could we could spend you know a half a day talking about what you have to do to prepare your boat and yourself for that kind of storm, whether you stay on the boat or you get off of it. Get off. Yeah, get off. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as far as the tropical storms and hurricanes go, I have a guide that I've written on that because we've gone through a couple of them now. Um, that has a checklist of how to prepare your boat for that. So if you want information right now about storms, um, especially because we're coming into hurricane season, yeah, um, if you want to know about that, go to my store. There's a link that will appear on the video. Go click click that and get the guide. Now, Sim, why don't you talk about storm prep as far as how can somebody prepare themselves for a storm in, in general? Are we talking about at sea? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, you know, might be doing a three, four, five day passage or something like that, and you ch you do all the research you can, and you see that there's nothing on there, but suddenly uh, a storm is on the horizon, and you've been warned. What you want to be doing is preparing the boat, especially downstairs. Make sure that everything is away that you can possibly put away. So things are not going to be flying about. Yeah, because you will, it's possible you'll heel over more than you would oh, yeah. normally. Yeah. And we've had like our whole entire captain's cabin, which is held up by bungee cords. We've had it all crash. Yeah, we've had it all crash. And um, so what you want to do is if you have a crew, you prepare, as a, as a skipper, you talk to your crew, you tell them what to expect, tell them what to do. You make sure that they are fed, watered before the storm hits. Make sure if they get seasick, they take their medication or whatever they want to be doing. And they know their jobs. And if the worst comes to the word, they know what happens if you need to abandon shit. So you really got to prepare them. Get them fed, basically, because you don't want to be cooking in a storm. And you need them to be ready, ready to go. So that's what I'll be doing for the people. You make sure that they've got all their lifelines, they all their, they wear all the life jackets, they have all the waterproofs ready, everything to do with that. That's that's mainly what I'm doing with people. And find out if they're happy to be doing watches because some people are not happy to be, uh, are just are too scared. And yeah. and because it, it is a scary thing, it's not very nice. It is. To back up, um, I think it's important to talk about like preparing for a storm before you are ever in a storm. So what I think we should discuss is just about things like what does reefing mean? How do you reef yeah, your uh, sails? Um, and I think that's something like the second you start sailing, like if you if you take classes, learn how to reef. Um, but the second you have your boat go out and practice and learn how to Reef reduce it. your sales. So do you want to just talk a little bit about reefing? Because I have had a lot of people email me saying, what okay. does reefing mean? <laughs> and don't be afraid to ask about these things. Really? You'll hear a sailing term and you'll think, oh, what's that mean? What's that mean? And I went like years not knowing a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. So don't ever be afraid to ask us because we're happy to talk about this. Well, reef reefing is basically making your sail area smaller. So you're reducing your sail size. And that is, I uh, it with with a head with our head cell or, or, or Genoa, it is making it smaller, or p actually putting a smaller sail up. We're in this it, we're on this boat where we we can we've got three configurations where we can have um, the f we can reef the make the Genoa smaller by by curling it in so it makes it actually smaller. But the problem with that is it then makes the sail not in the right shape for that. So then we have a staysail which is a sail that's inside a normal big front sail which is smaller and we use that a lot and then we have a storm jib which is 
a really small like a handkerchief they call, they call it people call it the handkerchief and that is you putting out there when if you have to put that out you're really in serious trouble and that's when you just hunker down and get everything also with our mainsail you got it goes all the way to the top of the mast but then what you do then is you've got three reefs which means you make the sail smaller which comes down on this on this boat we have three reefs it actually the first reef only brings the boat that brings the sail down only two foot and you say wow that doesn't sound a lot but that actually reduces it probably by about 20 percent something like that and then and then you've got a, the second reef and the third reef and the third reef is you you bring that down when you're in a really major storm and the practicalities i did do a video about reefing our sails yeah, yeah. i can't remember the name of it but if you look at all our videos you'll see it um, where i actually demonstrate how we reef but um, if you haven't bought a boat yet, it's real important to test the boat and understand how the reefing system works. Because for our particular boat, you have got to be at the mast to reef the main. So I have to attach myself on and get up to the mast. Yeah. And I have to slowly let the sail down and then hook, hook the hooks into the reefing points and then pull the reefing lines to tighten the back. Um, and then if I'm going to, or Simon and I, are going to put the stay sail up or the storm jib, we have to go between the, the, the mast and the um, bow of the boat. So if we're putting that up, it's already horrific weather, and you have to be very agile, you have to attach yourself on, and there's been times where I've been almost thrown off the boat, and the uh, thing has caught me. What's it called? The... the, the the uh, your, your ha harness yeah yes or whatever that line is that i attach to stuff yeah anyway i have actually gone back and if i didn't have that on i would have been a goner yeah so um i think a couple of things that are really important to understand is inevitably you will get caught in a storm you can't you can't be perfect you can't predict no one can predict the weather um it's happened to us on a few occasions squalls hit and we'll talk more about squalls but you need to be able to be comfortable with reefing, know how to reef, and, in, and in, it, when when what well, what we're trying to say is people are going to say, "Oh, you should reef early." Yes, we do, yeah. but sometimes <laughs> sometimes it things, just hits you. Yeah, I've I've looked over on one storm and it would it was blowing fifteen twenty knots. I looked over and all I saw was, in Greece was this wall of wind and rain just coming down to us, uh, yeah. and it was about a two miles away and I looked over and I'm thinking oh my goodness me and I just shouted at the crew to everybody get every, on deck everyone, <laughs> get your life jackets on get on deck yeah. and we've got to drop the sails and we're dropping the sails as it hits yeah so it's not as though we don't prepare you know if you know a storm's coming you make sure you get your sails ready to, for what what you're expecting and if yeah. you're expecting 20 30 knots of wind prepare your boat for 40 knots of wind uh, that's key um uh, there's lots of sayings about if you think you know something's gonna bad weather's coming yeah. reef right yeah. away yeah. don't, if you, wait, yeah. don't if you, wait the saying is it if you if you need to reef it's already too late yeah exactly yeah. and we've been caught out on a few occasions yeah. where it's too we've late been we've been sailing for three years so yeah you do get caught out yeah. But, yeah as far as storm prep goes um hurricanes tropical storms get my guide if you want more information on how to prepare specifically for something horrific like that um when it comes to sailing along and preparing for storms that you're inevitably going to get into yeah. practice find out how to reef um reef early yeah. um be prepared um, on what you're going to tell everyone on the boat. Yeah. It's real important, like Simon says, things about eating. And even if it's a quick squall, people will tend to get very sick very quickly. So get everyone on deck, get fresh water. Um, you know, yeah, just get, you know just get, I wouldn't say get everyone on deck, but get everyone comfortable where they, where they want yes, to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just... I'm make... saying get on deck. I suffer from seasickness so bad. If I'm below decks and we get hit, I'm like, oh, very sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you just got to make sure that everyone is, is happy to be wherever. Yeah. And preparing also out on, on the deck, if you know something's coming, just clear everything off. Yeah, cushions down below. Cushions down below, everything, cups, whatever is up yeah. there, yeah. just get it put away. Yeah, because so it will be gone. It'll be gone. And it could fly, it could hit somebody. Yeah. Uh, make sure you got no rope. 
all the ropes are secure yeah. because everything's cleaned, up. everything's cleaned up, put away. Yeah. Um, I, you know, ropes, ropes, <laughs> sheets or halyard tails. I call, tails. I call look, I call them ropes because <laughs> that's um, what they are. Yeah. Well, they'll go flying off, yeah. and you like like I w used to be real kind of relaxed about some of the lines that were hanging down off of our our mast and. Uh, during one storm, one went off the boat and, you know, trailing along, mm. and that's extremely dangerous. Yeah, especially because if you need to start the engine. Yeah. But, um, that's Storm Prep. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, you know. Um, if we're not covering something or covering too much, also let us know. It's hard to uh, know what you know and what you don't know, and we're just yeah. kind of discussing it. Right. Sime, Anchor Watch. Lacker Bay in... Paxos, which is just an island just below Corfu, in Greece. In Greece, and um, we, uh, it was my birthday, and so we we actually moved our boat, silliness, into really into the bay, and we're a big boat, and we were really quite new to this, and uh, suddenly I was taking the trash or rubbish. <laughs> Um, off next, <laughs> this br this wind just came from nowhere. It was like no wind, forty knots of wind came through the bay, and all these boats are dragging. I turned the uh, dinghy back around, and I was just put the boat up to <laughs> the side of the boat and was powering it on so it wasn't going to drag. And then we said, look, let's just. Pick up, so we picked up the anchor. I would say over half of the bay dragged. There yeah. was hundreds of boats in the bay. There were boats floating around with nobody on them. What'd you say? 40 boats. You always do it. It's 100 boats. No, I thought there were 100 boats. All right, okay. There was a lot of boats. So the first thing I did was I started our engine. Yeah. And then we, uh, me and my cousin was with us. Me and my cousin, uh, we both grabbed fenders and we were literally Fending fendering off boats, boats that, that were hitting, hitting us. us. Yeah. We almost connected with somebody else's like bowsprit. It was just disastrous. It came from oh. nowhere. Yeah. And because the bay was so crowded, no one had enough scope out. Right. So no one had enough uh, anchor line down to really keep people from dragging. Yep. So that was like a pretty Yeah, so I kept so I'm going so Kim was brilliant, she started the engine and uh Lauren grabbed hold of the uh paint line of the dinghy, switched it off, I jumped on, we got the anchor up and it was like dodgems. Yeah. We, we were sailing around. So we went back out to where we should have been in originally mm -hmm. and dropped our anchor and we had a table book for, your birthday. for my birthday, so I then had to do an anchor watch. Yeah, this it was a storm that nobody predicted. Yeah, yeah and it just kept blowing and blowing yeah. and blowing. And the great thing about when you're when you're on anchor is, generally, as long as the, there's no real tides running, especially in Greece, there is nothing. Yeah. The boat will face where the wind's coming from. And so we put out we put out a lot of chain. We were had uh, most of our chain out we were f probably the furthest boat out and i was on anchor watch and all i did then was when we were sat into a certain area into the wind i just looked over to the side and i picked a tree at the bottom which was then in line with the um a side of a building and i kept it looking on there and i would know if it went if it changed one way or the other we would we were either dragging or not yeah. And, um, and did you, you stayed outside the whole night? Uh, I I stayed outside. I think what time it started off at about three o'clock in the afternoon, and I think I went. I left at about eleven at night because it then then died down. And we have an anchor alarm, so I was, I was like that all night. A couple of things about anchor watches. If it's really really bad, um, I. I think a lot of people will do watches, just like um, mm -hmm. night watches. So three, put, so three put fen hours. Put fenders out. Yeah, put fenders all around the boat. Um, three hours. Every you know the next person switches and yeah. sits up there. If you can, make sure your boat is heading for open sea rather than heading mm. for land. If you come unstuck, um, it's bay. Which which it wasn't with us. Right. 
but yeah, that's Anchorage nothing you can do. Anchorage is a dangerous place because it's not only can you drag, but somebody around you can drag and hit you. Yeah. So if you get to a point where you're uncomfortable, it's actually safer to lift anchor, go out as far as you possibly can, and heave to um, during a storm, if, especially if you're tired, um, and yeah. you'll just stay in one place until the storm's over. Okay, heave to. Um... When Kim mentions you go out, yeah, you go out a long, long way. Some people, are, you know, if depends, you might not want to go out there. It, and it won't be very nice out there when, you, when you're going. But what you're doing is you heave to, is you, ha you bring your mane in nice and tight, and you bring in your genoa nice and tight, as though you're really um, clo sailing close to the wind. So, the, so both sails are in nice and tight and then you turn the boat the wrong way for the headsail so then it backfills and what happens then is your boat will then calm down and it's amazing you know we've been in where it's rough weather and we're sailing along and Kim needed to use the bathroom and we um were bouncing along sailing along nicely and king couldn't really go to the bathroom very well so we heaved two next minute from instead of the boat going like this it was then yeah and it essentially stops it yeah. essentially stops you're drifting you're, yeah. so that's why you've got to be make sure you're a long long way away from anything yeah. i.e land reefs or shipping channels yeah. and you can you can do it there's, there's friends of ours that have been sailing for about 15 years around the world around the world and there's, there's two couples and when they get really really tired they just heave to and go to sleep for six hours yeah you know and so you know you gotta be real careful about where you are yeah. and what's around you but if you need a break from a storm or, or a difficult situation um that is one way of doing it mm -hmm. heaving to heaving to yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things when I asked them, what do we need to know about being sailors? That's one of the first things they told us. They yeah. said, if you ever need a break because you're getting tired, just heave to. Yeah. yeah, and some boats heave to better than others. Some boats are absolutely brilliant and they virtually stand still. Other boats still sail along. Yeah. This one still sails along a little bit. Yeah. It, it, it's good, but not great, but it's good enough. Yeah. So, um, Anchor Watch... I think the other thing to probably add about that is uh, when a storm hits you and you are on anchor, if at all possible, put out more chain. Yep. As long as you're not going to swing into yeah, yeah. somebody. Um, the more chain you have, the more likely you have that the weight of the chain will hold that anchor down if you do drag and re-dig re in. Re in. Yeah. Um, and if you're ever in doubt or if you're ever nervous, it's better to pull up the anchor and get out of a bay. Yeah. And so you really got to keep your eyes on everybody else. It's not just about you dragging. It's, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't put enough chain out. We've seen so many people yeah, drag. Yeah, people, people might not even be on the boat. Yeah. Okay, so any questions about anchor watch or hitting storms hitting us at bay, just, you know, let us know. And third thing that we wanted to talk about is unexpected storms. Yes, unexpected storms. Um, or or thinking we're going to outrun a storm and we didn't well, make it. <laughs> no, unexpected storm is like the one I was mentioning about when we were in Greece. It started off with no wind. We'd looked at the... We were doing about a 40 to 45 mile passage from one island to the next. And um, we were within probably five miles of our destination... It was a beautiful day. We were having, the wind had picked up, and we were doing fifteen knots of wind, and we were sailing absolutely fantastic. Next thing was this wall coming across, and it just hit us. And this, and it, we were, it wasn't expected. It was like a, they call it the Meltemi, which you have to be prepared for in 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 Greece, and it just absolutely. We went from fifteen to fifty five knot gusts. Yeah for in two minutes and i was just shout i was discussing it not shouting i was discussing and i told kim's cousin i says get your life jackets on and she came seriously i went yes seriously get your life jackets on get someone on the helm i went up we went into wind we reefed the sails and we came and we then we went back and because we'd reefed the sails shortened the sail 
we were quite happily we were sailing along really really quickly the the waves were building up very very quickly and that is it, you'd be surprised how quick waves do build up yeah. we'd gone from foot waves to six foot waves in 10 minutes yeah it was amazing i've never seen it pick up so quickly and you know we're a big boat luckily and we we can handle that you know if you're a really small boat you have to be very very careful we then got into a bay and um luckily it was very sheltered yeah and we were then we i think did we anchor or did we go stern to i think we went stern to stern to in a bit of wind and it was fine yeah. but it was blowing uh, massively gusts out there and, and calm inside so you can find nice shelters as well yeah and um, it, for people that haven't watched um, all of our videos, <laughs> there's a lot of them, um, what's your biggest reason, what's the number one reason we've been caught out in so many storms? This is the bane of my my existence and everything like that was um, we um, are going to help people, go and pick people up, drop people off. Every time we have been, sorry, I'm moving the video around the uh, camera around because the sun started shining in. Um, going to sailing is slow and easy, and you can't get to so you know, it's unpredictable, it's unpredictable. That's what I was looking for, yeah, unpredictable. And you, you're in a beautiful bay, and you think, right, I've got to go. 70 miles this week to go and pick somebody up who's flying into a airport and you don't get there <laughs> it's as simple as that because yeah, some of the wind what what's happened is that's why we've end up in storms we okay. either have to get somebody on a plane or pick somebody up okay last little bit squalls yeah. when you're doing a long passage across oceans you get squalls and that is just a little bit group of um bad weather storm probably it could be half a mile wide. It could be three or four miles, and they're just like little rogues, and they just go around. We you call, can see them. You can see them. You can see them on radar, and you can see and, them. Like during the day, yeah, you can watch them come towards you. Yeah, yeah. Or you go towards them. <laughs> and they always came from behind us. And I remember, I was on watch, and um, I, I could see this. We called them squirrels because one of the Americans thought we were saying squirrels instead of squalls. Yeah, and. Uh, I said, there's one behind us, it's tracking from uh, left to right, it looks like it's going away from us, but just be, just keep an eye out. Because what we did, we we had two headsails out, and one of them was a Jenica, we pulled out Jenica, and the other one was a pulled out jib, and we were going along a really great... No main. No main, main was dropped and put away, and... Um, I said, just keep an eye on it, and if it comes towards us, give us a shout. And we were doing nine knots, we're sailing along, and in our back cabin, we have a little speedo, and I kept my eye on it. And I must have been down 10, 15 minutes, and I just kept looking at the speedo. Next minute, it was nine, 10, 11. As it, as it hit 11 and a half, I was up and out and running up to the... Um, everybody else was running up out there and he goes what should we do I went we do nothing, nothing nothing we can do we were doing 14 knots the whole boat was humming the rig was humming and we were just flying along and I said just keep an eye on the Jenica because it's about to explode it might be quite spectacular and then once the stalk once it's gone we'll pick up the pieces but yeah. no one is going out there while this is going on and for about three, four minutes, we were doing 14 knots. And the f that went through us, everything calmed down. We downpour came on. We all got soaked. And then we went back down to nine knots again. Yeah. Yeah, it is okay. And that's, um, I think that's the cool thing about squalls is they, you know, they do pack a punch, but they're usually quite, the, yeah. that, that front wind that really hits you only lasts for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, so for squalls, again, if you see one reef, yeah, you know, yeah. same old stuff. Yeah. And uh, if you get caught and, you know, you can't get up on the foredeck, you just, everybody hangs on and you just see what's going to happen. I think that's it for storms. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully it's informative. Yeah, yeah. And my biggest advice is 
if in doubt, just stay where you are. Do not go out in them because they are not nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you're ever in doubt, yeah, don't. But then, yeah. and the main thing is, if you're in one, do not panic. Yeah. If you panic, that's when trouble really happens. Yeah. Stop. Think. Mm-hmm. Keep calm, especially if you're the skipper. Everyone is looking at you. Bye. 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 If you want to know more about being a full-time sailing live aboard, our aim is to help entertain, educate, inspire, and connect with other sailors. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notifications of new videos. Check out our online bookstore where we sell helpful sailing guides. Visit our Etsy gift store for nautical t-shirts, jewelry, pillowcases, spices for sailors, and more. Or join our community on Patreon.